Straight Bet. The song name and the episode title, The Bet We Make With Roswell. That we can save the mansion and the sanctuary, make our own pie, and eat it to a very greedy solution. But a main character should be able to do at least this much. Everything is turning around thanks to Otto. Otto is just strategizing, letting us know that he's our friend, and thanks to him, we have this new bright future ahead of us. And beyond just Otto, I think that Puck being a deadbeat and leaving Amelia as soon as she came back, that also helps. Now, Amelia has gotten her memories back and she's more independent than ever. This reliance on Puck and Subaru is kind of bad for her. She needs to pick up her own self and be able to clear the trials. And I think that's why Subaru kind of left and that's why Puck left. Not completely sure exactly why Subaru left that night. I'm sure it was intentional. It was not just random. I also don't think it was simply to make a rouse or some sort of like a uh, panic because all the different villagers started to look for where Amelia was, which created chaos, which, uh, which created an opportunity for Garfield to show up at Otto, you know, in that place too. But I think there's something else going on. Probably something to do with like self-sufficiency and independence. Let's see what's going to happen to this reaction. Shima. <laughs> yeah, what's he gonna do if he just punches us? Like, what's Otto gonna Like, Otto has been great, he has plans, but what's he gonna do when Garfield just punches us? That's it? No, 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 there's gotta be a plan. The crystal. All planned, all planned, all planned. <laughs> so when he got punched, he must have stolen the crystal. All part of the plan. Okay. Bugs? <laughs> Yo. I mean, this, 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 uh, what's that kid's name? Yo, what's that bug? You know? No, no, not you know. What's that guy's name from fucking Naruto? The bug controller guy? Anyways, like, this is very powerful. Like, his abilities to co communicate to different creatures, not even just organic beings, but like, not just living beings like these insects. Yeah, Shino, Shino, not Ino. Shino, Ino's the girl. Like, this bug stuff, like, Alto is very, very crafty. The utility is def definitely there, but I feel like Garfield could just turn into a big cat and get out of this. But hey, we're buying time right now. <laughs> All right, opening or no opening? No opening. Oh. Huh? Okay, Otto backstory, finally. Okay. Soul of the language. You, you can't just... You can't just say the soul of language divine protection, but then... This is the blessing I was born with. You know, blessing and divine protections are two distinct things, but right now it's being used in a way where it's just describing the divine protection, not, act not an actual blessing. I hate these synonyms. Mother. God damn, what those That looks like a rich merchant. They're scared of him. Bald. I'm sorry, your son is. Got ligma. Oh, big bro, that's what it is. Yo, this isn't exactly the same, but remember Roxy and her incapability of talking to other people in her demon clan and felt like outcasted? So, Otto. From the beginning, he has solo language, and because he didn't have control over it, he didn't know how to really communicate with other people or be sociable. Mom and dad are very worried about it. Big bro teaches us to just write and speak that way, and then maybe that got him to communicate better. Oh, Otto wrote something for mom. Oh, he has a little brother too. Oh, It's like if their child spoke for the first time kind of deal. It's a big deal, man. Oh, <laughs> hey, all thanks to Big Brother, though. 
And now all the excess noise is gone. Now Otto can properly communicate. Oh. Lesser spirit or just a firefly? Eh. You can hear it. Oh, I see. So even like the divine protection before, like it was random noises. It was just random signal, but now he's able to interpret. Now I hear that in the cut content, Otto doesn't actually hear direct words. Like that time when he was talking to Patrash for a super and was going, ah, he doesn't have to do that. But also it's like more of vague feelings, kind of general sense of what they are saying and then interpretation on top of that. So it's not like you're hearing exact words, but obviously in the anime format, they, they can't really do that. So it's looking like, hey, big light went that way. We can hear directly words from it. Okay. Very rare skill. Rain's coming, guys. He's a prophet, bro. Oto should be the sage candidate. Fuck Subaru, bro. Oto should be the sage candidate. Yeah, people are gonna be sus. Yep. Be careful with it. Oh. Oh no, little brother. Shit. Did little brother fucking tell people, bro? Oh no. Is that sister or brother? I'm not sure, but it's a little sibling, I think. Ah, shit. You idiots. Why do you care, you fucking idiot? Because it's his big brother. And he wants some sort of accomplishment and pride and... See, my big bro is so great. Why aren't you believing him? I get it. It comes from a good place. It does. But like, god damn it, child. You're so stupid. Ugh. No, I can't. No, I can't. Let him get bullied. No, I can't. <laughs> Wait, so sometimes he says... I think when we hear actual Japanese, right? When we heard Oto talk to the land dragon in Japanese, that's basically Oto speaking like this, but to us, we're hearing the Japanese because they're conversing. When he makes mumbled noises like this, it's still the same thing. It says bug language, and if we were in a private moment where him and the bugs are interacting, we would hear Japanese. So I think this is confirmation that he does have to make up random fucking noises and doesn't just speak English or, sorry, Japanese. <laughs> Imagine nothing happened. These kids would be like, yo, your big brother's a fucking freak. Oh no. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> summoning a swarm of bugs. <laughs> that looks like some sort of fucking trial or ordeal that you would see from like the Prince of Egypt. Like fucking... Ramesses' people being plagued with locusts and shit, that's a bit too much, right? Like, surely there was a, a, an easier, more simple way to convey the message that you can't speak to animals. <laughs> what the fuck did he say? Just fucking... Let my people go. Destroy this place. My locust fucking plague on the village. Yeah. Do you think he accidentally says something wrong during that bug language? Like, nah, 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 nah. because he's not completely mastered the power, he accidentally said, like, kill the village rather than come say hi. Uh oh. <laughs> Yo, Otto took his girl? What the hell? Also, he's the Zota bug freak now, huh? Girlfriend? Huh? What's the truth? Yeah, indeed. What? What? He's mad. What did the cat say? Maybe the guy's cheating on the girl. Maybe he hurt me because why would he be upset right now? Because maybe the girl is getting done wrong? What is it? Wait, 
You're the eighth guy she's been. So the, so the girl wilding out. So, 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 so the guy got cheated. You're the eighth guy she's So she is just a hoe. And it was not the guy. So he was mad. Okay. I thought that he was mad at him. Okay, 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 okay. Hey, <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Something about this backstory is so fucking extreme. <laughs> also, just like, nyeh, meh, 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 meh. locusts start coming in like it's the fucking plague. <laughs> this girl's cheating on you, bro. <laughs> Somebody kill him. Oh, shit. The strongest in the village? Man, that's unlucky. Oto ran away. And I became a merchant. Let's go, Oto. <laughs> is this the oils? Is he in the oil business? I don't know what he's selling here. Oto making money. <laughs> God, his voice actor too. Holy shit. This is some shit that we never saw in season one, so they met before, huh? Oh, yeah. Hey. This! We're very diligent. Do you want to ride? What do you want? And then Otto got captured? Yeah. I'm glad that Batri just came in for one last death, man. So he just took his dragon cart and left? Okay. I mean, it's better than just dying. They could have definitely just killed the. Oh. Who? Ricardo! Ricardo! What the fuck? What the? What the? Ricardo's here? Uh, hey, why are you here? 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 Why are you was this? He was randomly found and we brought him here, but which break time was that? Episode 24 break time of season 1? Because like, I remember Otto just being dragged in through just like a thing and then Super was like, Oh, Otto, finally you show up here, but okay, okay. The Mimi one? Okay, then what the fuck are you guys trolling me? Dude... <laughs> You guys are just gaslighting me. You gotta remember the season you the finale break time season one. You remember that shit? I don't know. Do I? I kind of remember how we got saved. No, it's a season two. Season two. We got Mimi. Mimi. Mimi Diaries. The moment I say it's, it's the gospel. Shut the fuck up, retards. Oh. <laughs> Tears. Oh, a rebirth every time he cries. <laughs> Mimi. <laughs> Ricardo saves him. Alto's like crying. Mimi and Hetaro on TV. I don't know which one they are, but they're just ready to fucking mug his ass and put him in a fucking stick and carry him. <laughs> TV and Mimi. That's so fucking cute. TV and Mimi just behind with the rope, bro. So sinister, so cute. Oh, man. Oh. Yeah, I guess if you really think about, you know, how he got saved there and how he cried and marked the rebirth of his life, right? It is Natsuki Subaru's thanks, right? You could, you know, credit to Subaru, so. Just giving more reasons why Otto is so willing to help out Subaru, his friend in need. Uh oh. Garfield. Uh oh. We're cooked. We're cooked. <laughs> Yo, these animals are the worst. Fucking give us some hope. Everyone's like, you're cooked. You're done. You're dead, bro. The cat's coming. Opening. Opening. Too much power. Oh shit, there's a limitation to this power. <laughs> Talking, man. <laughs> Do it for your friend. <laughs> Does that mean that maybe he sees Big Bro as Subaru too? Kind of? I'm not sure. The the uh, super you know, Big Bro helping out in the 
Subaru. Big bro. Big bro is not Regulus. No, 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 no. What am I thinking about? I'm just looking at his hairstyle. I'm just thinking of like, are we going to see big bro in the future? Or maybe little bro or something. I wonder. <laughs> Nice. Yo, these bombs are powerful. Okay. I guess Garfield transformed to get out, and while he was running, it was very loud, and the ground was shaking. But now he's back to normal form, right? Yeah, what's your plan now? <laughs> now what? We got another plan? One more strategy? <laughs> yeah, neither did I, honestly. Like, oh, I thought that Otto was just a pushover so far, but like, he's shown us a different side of him, man. And I'm sure maybe even Garfield respects him. <laughs> what are you doing? We bought time, Emilia Subaru. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what the fuck did he do there with the ground? Ram comes out of nowhere. He picks the ground? Oh, wait. What is this? What the hell was that? It looked like he was earth bending. Like, what? Is this earth magic? He just, like, used the ground. It, it looks like he simply created some sort of earth guard with his feet, but that's crazy. Thanks, Ram. That's the Ram special. So, it's not impressive because we didn't die. So, if we're not dead, then, like, Ram is not impressed. Like, come on. You're, all you had in the state you're in, you're not dead yet. Come on, man. Show me your resolve. Maybe? Hmm. Uh, Subaru and Amelia has more time to talk it out and maybe Amelia can be ready to clear the trial and everyone can be liberated from the sanctuary. <laughs> if we're talking about whether he's worth anything, he's not worth anything. Ouch. Ooh. But, but... There it is. Alright, my friend. I mean, Ram, you have seen Barusu literally subjugate the White Whale, literally save Arlan Village, literally defeat Betrigus within like a span of like a week or something. Come on, girl. <laughs> Says the girl that put fucking grass. It just boiled the grass and served Garfield. You can't even make tea, right? Mm. Yeah. True. True. <laughs> A man who only has good timing. And it, I guess it does seem that way because he just happens to have all this forbidden knowledge of when things are going to happen and being prepared at the right time due to the power. Alright, Ram believes. Look at that faith she has. Uh oh, he's getting serious. That's very interesting how he takes off his top. To, to, because like, look, 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 right? He takes off his like top. So that it won't like get destroyed during the transformation. But as he gets big, he leaves like the stuff on his waist on. And it does like... Did it get bigger? It did, right? Is there something special about this waist? Or is it simply be kind of silly if, you know, he got fucking naked and turned into a tiger? I don't know. Oh! The hell? Yeah, she's strong. I mean, 
We've always known Ram to be pretty strong, especially in the past with her horn on. But like, she doesn't have a horn. But like, look at this shit. Like, she is physically just matching Garfield transform. <laughs> I, 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 up until now, I never knew this. Like, I knew Ram was strong, but like, to this extent? Like, what the fuck? W what? <laughs> I genuinely was not familiar with her game. I, I, I apologize. What the? And this is a nerfed Ram. This is straight up nerfed Ram. What? Oh, Jesus. The horn slit. <laughs> what does that mean? This isn't simply her exerting too much of her own stamina and then bleeding out from her horn slit, right? Was that like an exchange of blows that Garf did land? All I see was her just punch the shit out of Garfield the entire time and then she started bleeding out of her forehead, which I assume is the horn slot. I don't know. Maybe there was like an attack that was landed. It's pretty sure it is just backlash, right? Of too much mana. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I hope Oto survives, man. Alright, what's going on here? So, I guess... Because Subaru is still clean, because like we still don't know exactly how he got the qualification or if he just brute forced it, because his face is clean right now. Because remember, he entered the fucking sanctuary or the you know this this altar place without having a qualification. So this is all the events that happened before the last scene in the last episode where Subaru sat with Amelia, right? <sighs> Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know anymore, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. <laughs> So did he just, like, so did he just brute force it? Because, like, we skipped that shit again, and he was clean before, and now he looks dirty. If you try to hit the barrier without the qualification, you, you just get clapped. You die, but he just tanked it. All right. Also, his resistance is high. I don't really know what it means to have a higher resistance or stability. I wonder if Echidna stimulating or which factor has also allowed him to brute force it without taking as much damage like fucking Roswell did. Then again, did Roswell try to do the trial? Did he try to just enter? I don't know. Otosuen. It's such an- it's such a- whenever you have an episode title dedicated towards like a character name, it's- it's a pretty amazing episode. Wilhelm von Astre episode too was fucking crazy. The Otto, honestly, the whole backstory, it's kind of funny. <laughs> like, I think the silliest thing that happened <laughs> is, is this part. Like, this part is just funny to me. With the little brother just fucking snitches, and Otto's like, ah, nah, nah, nah. and then the fucking bugs like attack. <laughs> like a fucking swarm on the village. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was fucking crazy. Also, seeing Bed to the Goose, right? The last death that we saw was actually good too. And then the connection with Ricardo, Mimi, TV, the stuff we saw in break time of them talking about, you know, saving uh, Otto and. You know, and everything to kind of do to like why Oto is like so helpful and is thankful towards Natsuki Subaru. All right. Second half of the episode, let's go. I found you. Broke the promise. Mm. Oh, he's enduring. Is that not good? I'm afraid that she'd be mad at us for breaking the promise and leaving her at night. Do you want us to be? <laughs> Alright, bitch, you want some of this heat right now? This is kind of like a Subaru back at home with mom and dad and he wants to get punished and be called out but mom and dad were too nice. I mean, we left first. No, 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 no. Uh, well, eh. I had something to plan out. No, 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 no. We, you can do it. You got the memories back. 
サラじゃないのなあなあなあうまくいかないってそう思ってるからじゃ I ain't gonna lie. Until last episode, yes, that's how I felt. Yeah. I have zero faith in you, bitch. You're not gonna fucking clear this shit. Come on now, don't lie to me. You failed this shit over and over and over again. Don't fucking lie to me. You know you can't do it. But it was impossible. It was impossible until the memories came back after Pug broke the contract. Now, I have faith. <laughs> Promise breaker. Is it all? Because I, I understand why Puck is doing it, right? We don't want Amelia to be too dependent on others. She needs to be able to stand up for herself, become self sufficient. So, Subaru breaking that promise at night, is it another example of that? Yeah. Yeah. Poor girl, man. And you know Subaru is going to break more promises probably in the future. <笑>君が好きだ。あ、オッケー。もう何度も突っかかりやがって。試練がなんだ。たかが過去だろうが、不自由自してるんじゃねえ。お、お、オッケー。代わりにやってやろうとすりゃ、結構失敗じゃ口
good sides and the bad sides and we are all just irrational imperfect beings and we learn to get along with each other i don't think this is too unreasonable <laughs> It's not because I believe in you that I love you, but it's that I love you because I believe in you. I don't know. Where are we going with this, bro? Every time Amelia retorts screaming, it's just like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, what does that... Okay, let's try to dissect this. I, I love this quite often. There's this like too deep for me situation where it's just like, a because of B, but it's like, nah, B because of A, right? So what is he saying here? I, it's not because I believe in you, I love you. A is believe and B is love. I believe in you because I believe. It's not because I believe in you that I love you. I believe in you because I love you. I believe in you that I love you. I believe in you because I love you. I, <laughs> hold on, <laughs> my, my brain is melting. It's really no cuff hoodoo at a moment. It's not because I believe in you that I love you, but it's because I believe in you that I love you. <laughs> no, one more time, one more time, one more time. It's not that, it's not because I believe in you that I love you. It's not because, right? The belief is not coming because of the love, okay? Let's, let's break that apart. It's not, the belief isn't coming because of the love, but the belief comes because of the... <laughs> it's not... <laughs> I can't fucking... I can't fucking understand. <laughs> it's not because... It's not that I believe in you that I... <laughs> I'm trying to understand this shit. It's not. It's love first. It's love. It's it's it, it believe love. No, no. I. It's not. It's. <laughs> I believe in you that I love you. No, I love you because I believe you. That's it, right? It's not that I believe in you that I love you, but I love you, and that's why I believe you. I love you because I believe in you. It is. It's, it's literally my first take, right? My first take was. You know, oh, oh, I've seen this shit before. I believe in that I love you. No, it's, I, it's, it's that I love you because I believe in you. I, I, I think. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Dude, that's what I'm saying, bro. Just loving someone isn't the reason to believe in them. But the Subaru, like, this is an impossible pill to make her swallow, though. Don't you think so? Yo, I love this. I love this right now. He just, he just fucking, wow. I think this is progress though. Cause like we have never ever been in a conversation like this with Demelia before. This is raw. This is like true feelings are finally coming off. And rather than being EMP, it's just like, fuck, you're useless. But I still love you. Why can't you understand that? I believe, it's not that I believe you because I love you, but I love you because I believe you. Yes, That's right, the sanctuary. <laughs> Dude, I. <laughs> this is so confusing. It, <laughs> this conversation is so confusing right now. I, what the fuck is happening? My brain is actually fucking shaking. Like, he's being very honest for the first time, though. Like, straight up, he is being super honest and. Everything he's saying is doesn't make sense to me. Like, how the fuck would you just believe someone because you love them? And then immediately just retorts and it's super. It's like, fuck you. I, you know, yeah, I've, I've died over. I'm suffering right now because of an Emilia. It's like, who the hell asked you to do that shit? You're being fucking selfish. I feel like Emilia is correct. Then <laughs> prove it. We're back to square one! We're back to square one! Why do you love me? I love you because I love you! That doesn't make any sense! You know how much I suffer because of you? You don't think that's fucking love? That makes no fucking sense to you! 
why are you doing this? Because I love you. <sighs> Let him cook. Where are we going with this? But you broke that promise. New soundtrack. Mm -hmm. and that's a good thing. You're gonna become even better than before. You will overcome all your past trauma. You will achieve greatness. Then the rise of Amelia will happen. Mother. That's right. Remember, all that matters is that the ends justifies the means. Yeah? Why do you love me? <laughs> If the me that you say love goes away, could you? What if it's Satala then? If the me that you say love. Is this supposed to be super important dialogue right now? I'm sure every line is super important and I'm sure there's Easter eggs sprinkled in here and there so that we can do our mental gymnastics and reach all we want. But this, this is like, hmm. Okay. No, 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 I understand that she's gonna change. That's level one way of thinking. Guys, please stop undermining me. Like, don't you think that I have the base understanding that what she's saying here is obviously alluding to her memories coming back and becoming a different person than we've seen from arc one, arc two, arc three, right? But I'm trying to go beyond that and theorize. What if this is supposed to be in relation to Satala literally taking over even though it just be looking like Amelia? Why? Oh, we gotta talk about this, because a kiss is coming. A, a kiss is coming right Oh yeah, this, oh, oh man. Let, okay, let's let it happen first, but like this, is it the right time for a kiss right now, really? In this vulnerable moment where she has no fucking idea what's going on and is confused and lonely and isolated and dependent, <laughs> and is getting confused, has no idea what love is and super thinks that a kiss is gonna save her, maybe it does. Who am I supposed to? What am I supposed to know? She didn't dodge it. She closed her eyes. And she's embracing for a kiss. So who am I to say that she's being groomed right now? Well, that's the thing. The person being groomed has no understanding that they're being groomed. And that's the whole thing. And this is happening while Echidna's watching. <laughs> Echidna is watching all this shit, right? Oh my goodness, bro. We're actually doing it! In the witch's graveyard! This is a huge moment! Yeah, that's crazy. Like, the last thing I would have expected here was a kiss after they were like screaming and yelling at each other i'm like oh my god this relationship is getting crazy and then a kiss to solve it and amelia what do you think what do you think amelia because i love you <laughs> yeah, it's just like it's 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 just like 
we do all these things because we love her. And she's like, why are you doing this? Because we love her. It's just like <laughs> the question, <laughs> why do you love me? Because I love you. N no, 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 no. But like, why? Because I love you. <laughs> <laughs> There's never an answer. <laughs> it's, it's because I love you. Why? <laughs> because I love you. Yo, was she crying after the kiss? Yo, was the kiss that bad she's actually starting to cry or what is this? Tears of relief? Joy? What's happening? Because this is the run. I love you. I believe in you. That's right. As long as the ends justifies the means, it's gonna be alright. Mother. Now, but that mom, was that truly what my, our mom said? Because our mom never said that to him in real life. These were during the trials. There's no way what Echidna is memory distorting. That, that's not like Echidna's like doing that shit, right? It's not, it's, this is not like literally like Echidna just like puppeteering and you know, that one line, like, because like, was that mom? So think about that for a second. Am I reaching? Cause that those are just like the mom and dad from her memories, and she did say that during the trial. Like, but why? Let let's just entertain the thought that Echidna would have done that. Why? You think that Echidna would have told so that the ends justifies the means would somehow relate in this happening? There's no way Echidna would want this happening. But maybe this interpretation could have been taken the wrong way. I don't know. Maybe that interpretation could have helped him create that contract with the kid and then go down the greed if route as long as the ends justified the means. I don't really know, but something interesting to really think about. Okay. Love? What are we finding? Memories? Alright. Again, this is fucking season one shit. Remember season one finale? Like, this is literally that again. It's like, you know, I find what? Just like, you know, all my fucking love for you. Just like my feelings to, you know, keep me running forward. You'll find your thing. So she doesn't even fucking know what she wants. And he's like, nah, you're going to figure this shit out. Just like season one finale. It was like, oh, you know what love is? Don't worry, baby girl. Slowly but surely, you're going to call. You're going to fucking fall head over heels for me, right? And right now, it's just like, yeah, you'll find the most precious feeling, right? And I hope that's going to be about me or something, right? Right over here. Yeah, for me. I like to hope so. For sure he'd want to. Love. <laughs> Goes right back to fuck. Bitch, I, I told you about me. Daddy's gone. He left. The crystal's broken. Stop looking there. Look at me. Mm. What is it? Alright. We built her up. Okay. A reason to believe. And that's today's episode. I think this is post credits. This is not post credit scene, is it? Wait, 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 wait. This is post credit scene. Hold the fuck up. Oh, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Subaru and Amelia out. Garfield. <laughs> what happened to Otto? <laughs> oh, no. What happened to Otto, bro? Matazetana. Oh shit, we're not fucking done yet. And that's today's episode. We had Otto Suen as the title card in the first half, and then a reason to believe at the end. And were there something interesting going around? What? What's the symbolism here? That Subaru showed up? Is that it? Is it literally it? That like, this is confirmation that before, Emilia did not see Subaru as the main reason for love or something but boom Subaru now exists in the eyes therefore <laughs> successfully groomed <laughs> mission complete innocent unaware elf girl has now been manipulated to become my waifu <laughs> let's talk about that for a second no matter how I see this episode this kiss makes little sense to me in terms of what kind of state that Amelia is in, let's break down what Amelia is. Amelia is 
an elf girl who lost her memories a long time ago and has the mental maturity of like a child. She doesn't know what a love is, she doesn't know what a date is. She's a very innocent, pure girl. And in this current arc, she's been isolated from everything, constantly traumatized in the trial. Puck isn't here anymore, the only thing that she can really relate to. And now she's beaten down, alone, nobody, sad. And Subaru also then breaks a promise, which makes her even more sad. So she's in this very emotionally vulnerable state where she doesn't also even know anything about love. And then Subaru shows up, gaslights her about how much he does everything for her. And, and I think that the part about accepting her, even her flaws, I think that is love. I think that to truly love somebody, you need to accept them for all they are. And, you know, not just accepting their flaws, but wanting them to improve on it. That is love. Not cherry picking, but accepting all they are. But at the same time, after their discussions of how it's selfish, that makes no sense. Why do you love me? Because I love you. And then it all boils down to this kiss scene where he says, and he even says, hey, if you don't want this shit, dodge it. Do you think that Amelia was in the right headspace to accept a kiss? Or do you think that this is an emotionally broken down girl that was forced into a kiss. I don't know. Whether or not Subaru is, groom is grooming with the intention of grooming is not the part of the discussion, right? But like, this scene does feel a bit off. I, I, I can't just wholeheartedly tell you that, oh my god, amazing kiss, let's fucking go, Amelia Subaru ship, it's actually happening. This feels a bit more than that. And maybe this is the thing that Amelia needed. Maybe this is what's going to help her push forward. And eventually the feelings that she'll figure out is going to relate to Subaru somehow. But I can't help but think everything here seems very artificial and the situation has been optimized for Subaru to just swing in and take quote unquote advantage of a poor vulnerable girl through this kiss. And I'm not even blaming Subaru for this shit either. Blame Roswell. <laughs> Blame everyone that created this environment. I don't know. Something about this kiss feels off to me. And I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. I don't think Natsuki Subaru is a fucking predator that he's grooming. No, no, no. But this situation never really felt like a genuine kiss. You know what I mean? Due to this situation that's been set up. And again, I don't blame this kid. It's just that the whole setup and the execution, which were not really in his control, created a scenario where the kiss happened and it was a beautiful scene, a song playing by Amelia's voice actor, Door, right? It was amazing, but I don't know. We're gonna need to dissect some cut content. We're gonna have to... Ha! What, <laughs> what was the fandom like? <laughs> what, what was the ReZero fandom like when this was airing four years ago? Were people fucking upset? Were people happy? The people have my same opinion, because I think that most people that are not obsessively analyzing this are probably going to think it's hype, it's amazing, oh my god, peak voice acting, amazing kiss scene, this is the moment, man, a million Subaru, let's fucking go. But was did nobody really bring up my points about how this shit was not like a romantic kiss? It just felt like a forced situation, which did save a million away, but something feels off, I don't know. Maybe I'm being a woke fucking Twitter retard right now. I don't know. The... It's just... If anything, the kiss... Could feel... Not romantic, but some sort of like emotional support. I don't know how to fucking put my words into it, but... It was odd. And... Here's another thing. Remember in season 1 finale? Remember season 1 finale where we did the whole discussion about how... Oh, super rude. What the fuck? Kind of cringe line at the end. Trying to be a white knight and be like, oh baby, you can fall in love with me slowly but surely. To me, that felt weird because of the cultural differences between a woke fucking left-leaning person in North America versus, let's say, the Japanese culture. So could this example be another case where due to the culture difference and the values that we have, maybe this seems very chivalrous, maybe this seems very romantic in Japanese culture, but 
a foreigner like me is now injecting my own woke ideology into this and therefore it seems forced. I don't know. Hey, at the very least, I'm gonna give you my honest opinion on this scene and maybe you'd understand why I feel this way. I think another really interesting thing is with this line. Mom. Mom saying ends justifies the means. Remember, these are fragments of memories that's, that Echidna used to create the situation. So an interesting headcanon would be Echidna said this shit in hopes that Subaru would simply take the greed contract and if route. But the ironic thing is Subaru's interpretation of this actually cucked Echidna and she used this <laughs> and, and Subaru used this for the Amelia kiss route. So Echidna literally did everything in trial to like convince him to take the deal. But now she sees <laughs> getting cucked. <laughs> like that, the entire thing happening is like, I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. Even if it's not, I think it's fun to kind of theorize like that. Alto's backstory. Sad. Kind of reminds me of Roxy from Mushoku Tensei. There's some parallels. Funny, because he summoned a locust swarm to the fucking village. <laughs> Our little brother's fucking stupid. Um, this girl, they can fucking go die for all I care. I hope, I don't know what they're doing. Betsugu stuff, right? The Mimi, uh, you know, Ricardo stuff was also cute. <laughs> and Mimi and TV showing up with the ropes at the end. <laughs> <laughs> this could be the funniest scene if Oto just like crying. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's okay. I can do this now. And Mimi and Timmy's like, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> This scene is so fucking cute. <laughs> and that's pretty much it with Garfield showing at the very end. Oto's sacrifices, Ram's help, beautiful. Thank you so much. Subaru and Amelia, their relationship is strengthened even more. And now. I'm not exactly sure what this means at the end. Because like, we were literally in there and I thought Amelia was gonna take a trial, but I guess he's not gonna take a trial just yet. Instead, we're gonna come out and Garfield is here all bloodied up, so Ram, Otto... I doubt they're dead. I feel like... Because this kiss happened... This is gonna be the loop that we don't fail. If you regress... Unless a new checkpoint has been made, like, this shit? You cannot erase it. There is no fucking way that we redo this run. This kiss was way too important in Subaru and Emilia's characterizations. And I 100% believe that this will be the successful run. That's for me. If you're still here though, and if you enjoyed this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlist for more content. And until next time, take care.